Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Breeze, Breezeway Productions' The Breeze, where we are going to continue our coverage of this year's San Luis Obispo Film Festival and uh, the 2021 edition. And we are happy to bring to you another amazing documentarian who is showcasing his film, Alice Street, which is screening this year at the festival. Oakland, corner 14, ground zero for gentrification. What makes Oakland beautiful is the diversity and its arts. Oakland community members are protesting new developments in their neighborhood. We did not march to City Hall, we danced. <laughs> Art and culture brings us together. All of that is being threatened. We're here to fight, we're not going away. Uh, Spencer Wilkinson, how are you, Spencer? Oh, I'm doing great, thanks so much for having me on. For sure. Thanks for coming on. Uh, tell us a little bit about Alice Street. Well, Alice Street is a documentary film that uh, is set in Oakland, California, and it's set actually at one particular intersection, which is why the, the film is named Alice Street, uh, where two muralists uh, from Oakland painted one of the largest murals they've ever undertaken uh, in the midst of real rapid gentrification that was happening around them um, in downtown Oakland. So it's a story that follows them from kind of inception to the creation of this mural. And then really as the paint is drying on the walls, they find out a luxury condominium is gonna be built that would obscure uh, all four walls. And the community really decides to kind of rise up and, and fight back against this thing. Sure. How did you link up with your subjects for the documentary and then the trust was made so that you guys can, can make the film together? Yeah, you know, I was really inspired. I was actually living on Alice Street. Uh, when I learned about uh, this mural going up. And I was inspired because there was a lot of really, you know, strong movements happening in Oakland uh, around kind of anti-gentrification, anti-displacement. Um, and this mural was really kind of another one of these great examples of artists coming together, creating coalitions with diverse communities uh, represented in the community and, um, and working to find solutions to what was happening. Um, and so because I lived literally two blocks away from where this mural was going up. Um, I met the muralists and um, got connected with them really early on, got into their kind of um, sessions as they were coming up with the design, bringing the design to the community to get feedback. Sometimes the feedback sessions went really well and other times, you know, uh, they got feedback that, that caused them to rethink their, their whole design. So yeah. um, I was really kind of nestled in pretty, pretty tight. And then because of my proximity, you know, it was pretty, uh, it was amazing to, to get to know all these, uh, you know, different artists and cultural workers in, in the community. Since you've seen firsthand uh, or the, the community effort to stand up to real estate developers and, you know, people that have a lot of like corporate interests and things like that, is it, do you have any uh, signs of, of hope that the community will win in these types of things? Uh, and that when people band together and that they don't want a high rise and they want to preserve the culture of, let's say, Oakland in this case, do you, you see that things can, can happen where they can win in communities around the country? Well, you know, I mean, it was amazing because I had no idea what this story was going to unfold. Sure. Um, but as we were watching the course of this, you know, the condo was planned, the community kind of banded together, um, decided to have meetings with the developer, um, got to sit at the table as they were planning out uh, their development with the oh. city planners and, and others. And they were able to actually get um, community benefit agreements. Um, and it started at that site, but then it all went on to five other sites in the neighborhood. Um, and all in all, this community that really formed around this mural defense project yeah. um, won over $20 million in community benefit agreements uh, wow. uh, from different five different developers in the city of Oakland. So, we hope the film can actually be, uh, you know, an inspiration for communities around the country who are dealing with, you know, a development's gonna happen, right? Gentrification is happening in big cities. Um, but, you know, if the right people can be at the table and come up with solutions that both can benefit what's there, keep people rooted in their community yeah. and allow for, you know, new businesses to come in, it can be, I think there's a way to, to do it. You know? Sure. And that you, people can use your, your documentary as a blueprint to see how the communities can work together with these developers and then enrich the neighborhoods without fearing for gentrification and being pushed out and things that could, you know, really alter what they're so used to in their own communities. So I was, I was happy to hear that. 
and also happy to see that there was some artistry that was showcased. Some murals that were portrayed were beautiful with some of the artwork that's there. Are the artists also uh, doing their work on other things that, that people might be able to purchase if they wanted to have their art on their wall or like, you know, promoting on different websites or things like that? Are artists doing that also as well? Oh, that's great. You know, um, definitely the, the organization that really put this mural on is called Community Rejuvenation Project. And they can be uh, reached at crpbayarea.org. Uh, um, and then the other artist that was really involved is this guy named Pancho Pescador. Yeah. And Pescador in Spanish is, you know, fisherman. Mm -hmm. um, but he's in a prolific uh, studio artist as well as a muralist in Oakland. And definitely follow him. Check him out. AliceStreetFilm.com also has um, some great art uh, from the mural uh, because the mural is now covered. You know, oh. um, the art has been transferred on to, you know, um, other ways in which to kind of like support the project. But yeah, I mean, follow your local artists, you know, get involved in your community, um, support these guys, you know, and women who are, who are doing incredible work and, uh, you know, bringing public art. Yeah. City, so, yeah. Well, you, there it is. I mean, I, I'll put all of those links below and we'll showcase oh, some of you. the stills and things that are provided. Uh, that are like a trailer possibly for the film, whatever is in your EPK, we'll be able to showcase that. Um, is there anything that you'd like to say to the San Luis Obispo Film Festival for a screening this year? You know, it's such an honor to be part of this festival. It's an incredible festival. Um, and, you know, in this time of COVID and, and uh, social distancing, you know, they've been really amazing. We, they sent us a swag bag, you know, uh, by mail, which is like, you know, just little small things that in this time, it's just been, a lot of support and it honestly um uh it's an honor to be part of the festival uh, i have a lot of family roots in the central coast and so coming back here is kind of a homecoming for me nice. um, so it's, it's been just a great experience so far yeah it's beautiful in central california with lush green lands i've been to morrow bay I've, I've been to san luis obispo that whole area uh lots of wine lots of good food and very relaxing and it's much more of a slower pace than los angeles I'm slow as you know uh, yeah, so I'm happy that we were able to talk about your film, Alice Street, that is going to be screening this year, and make sure that our viewers check out the San Luis Obispo Film Festival, which will be screening this month, uh, March 2021, and uh, I wish you all the best of luck for Alice Street in future endeavors, Spencer. Thank you so much. Oakland, an intersection of traditions, ground zero for gentrification. Oakland is getting all of this national and international attention as a go-to place. What makes Oakland beautiful is the diversity and its arts. We started collaborating with community groups and neighborhoods throughout Oakland, focused on painting pieces that were valued by the community. 14th and Alice Street gets the largest mural we've ever painted. Right across the street is the Malanga Cascalord Center for the Arts. This center has put Oakland on the international map. It's no center like this in the world. This community in Chinatown dates back over 150 years. The theme of Chinatown is surviving and thriving. Immigrant communities come together and create these enclaves because it's about our survival. The development proposal before you is at the site of 14th and Alice Street. We expect to redevelop this property, the mural would be destroyed. The way in which neighborhoods change is deliberate. Right now, there is the interest to actually transform this city. Where is this plan coming from? And then how come they didn't tell any of us? No, we need to talk about how you're going to be a part of our community. We need to protect that legacy. We need to support Oakland artists, and we want equitable development now. It was really the mural that actually brought this coalition together. Oakland's community members are protesting fast-tracking of new developments in their neighborhood. What started with the mural actually led to a movement. We did not march to City Hall. We danced. <laughs> We're here to fight. We're here to stay. We're not going away. In a time when folks are being divided, art and culture is a way that really brings us together. Oakland is here! 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 O
When you try to take that away, that is just straight up gentrification. Having places where your language and your identity and your history is affirmed is pretty critical. All of that is being threatened. Ancient rhythms, culture keepers, this is Corner 14.